Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. I didn't even know you could open that gate. Can we open all of these then? Uh, apparently not. No, it's just you go close enough to open those over there. What about these over this way? You can walk on the back of the sheep. You can open those gates right there. And you can open these gates right here. Can't open that one. Can't open any others, but you can open those. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Can't open that one. Uh, but yeah, you can open several of the gates. We do have working gates. We've got three full pallets of wool and a part pallet down there. We need to do something with this wool. We need to move it around a bit. We're not actually going to go and sell it. We're just going to leave it right where it is. At the moment, wool is $1,635 per thousand litres. So, we've got a little bit, but, um, you know, we, well, we can get a little bit of money for it, but not enough yet. Uh, if we have a look in the actual animals, you can see that grass and hay is still completely full on there, so I'm not able to clear that away or do anything with that bale up there. We have had a growth stage now on the grass. Uh, chickens are 45 minutes away from being ready to roll. We've also got quite a few eggs down here. We're going to be moving those eggs soon. But there's there's another thing. That, right, that's better. It's like less croaky now. Uh, there's another thing that I would like to try and do. And this is something that i seen suggested. I think it was on a forum, possibly. Uh, but it does sound like a really cool idea. So we're not going to be able to do that immediately. Because we've got to get a couple things ready. I'm not going to say what it is. Um, but the other thing that I want to do was to sell the combine and buy another one. Now, we were looking at the combines. We were looking at what was available. And I was sort of deciding, basically, that these two here are pretty much the same. This one's got a wider cut on it, so it would cut slightly faster. But the tank fills up faster, which makes it a little bit inconvenient. Uh, there's not a lot to choose from between those two combines right there. This one is altogether smaller. Again, no real reason to go with it. And the one disappointment I've got about the Bison Super over there is that it is so expensive compared to these combines here. These are sort of more mod... You know, we're getting more modern combines here, and this is still ridiculously expensive. I was expecting that one to be about half that price so that it would be a good jumping-off point for your arable crops. Uh, but that doesn't seem to have been a thing. So... I'm thinking, really, we want to go with this one at the moment. It's got to be the Massey Ferguson Activ Activa, not Activia. That's, that's a yogurt drink, I think. Um, so the Massey Ferguson right there. And then you've got the headers over here. And it is that one right there, the 25 foot or 7.6 meters. It's quite, it's, it's a bigger combine. It's an, altogether, it's a, it's a step up from what we've got at the moment. However... Unfortunately, altogether, it's going to cost us $256,000. We don't have $256,000. We've got $45,000. Now, we can get this combine over to the dealership. And we can sell it over there rather than trying to sell it here. So that would be a step in the right direction. We also want to sell this baler um, so that we can go for a square baler. That is something that we're going to be working on. We're on fertilized 100% on here. We've... Um, Sprayed for weeds as well. I'm hoping that we'll get a good crop out of that field. Uh, but yeah, generally, we're, we're a bit short on funds. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get this combine over to the dealership. And then I want to sell it. So I'm not going to bother driving out all the way up the road. It's going to take ages to drive it up there. So I may as well just do it like this. Um, we go down here and... Zoom in a little smidgen like that. And if I take off the trailers and the tractors like that and the machinery like that, I've then got the combine. Oh, wait a minute there. Uh, reset. Yes. Okay. Now I want to go to these items here and we've got the roll belt. I actually want to take that one back to the dealership. So... Although I need a tractor over there, don't I? In order to be able to pull that one around. So we'll, we'll drive that one back ourselves. Uh, how do you move from one of these to the next one? Is what I want to know. Like, how do, how do I go from one thing to the next? Is that even a thing? Oh, hang on. What about Q&E? 
Oh, no. So Q&E doesn't work on there. It used to be that you could just like scroll through them, couldn't you? you? You went on there and you had a little thing on there and you just scrolled through them and you clicked next. But it doesn't seem to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't have a thing where you can just go to the next one. I've got a universal bucket there. I can click on it and then that's it. It doesn't give me a next. I don't like this. Reset. Pan map. Right, I can go to the roll belt. I can go to that one. But look at these. I've, I've got all of these here together. And it's not going to the next one. What about arrow keys? No. Arrow keys don't do it. Up and down keys don't do it. Is there a way to do this? I'm using AWSD. That's not doing it either. Q&E goes through those. So how would I get that combine? I mean, the, the combine header I don't think is there. I think it's not that one. I've taken those off. The, the combine header's got to be here. That's the roll belt. So what's the one? Yeah, see, it's, it's not letting me... It's, it's, I'm looking right at the combine header, okay? It is not letting me select the combine header on here. I've got reset on that one, but I don't have any way to select the next machine. This, this is this is redonkulous. This is utterly redonkulous. Right. Blue, I've got just trailers over here. I've got nothing here in front of me. So it's not that. It's got to be these. Um, that's the roll belt. That's the Nova. It's, it's jumped over to the Nova Cat. It doesn't appear to be any option for selecting your next machine and i can try zooming right out that that doesn't do it either if anybody knows how to do this then please let me know in the comment section because this seems a little bit ridiculous look i got the timber runner right there i can get the dolly if i click on it over on that side but it's not it's, it's overlapping and i'm not easily able like these here look i can't differentiate between all these different machines i've got loads of them lined up here and all i'm getting is a couple of mowers i'm not picking up the ones that i want to pick up on here and doesn't appear to be anything else that's going with it can remove those out of the equations the combine is not doing anything and we've got the trailers and then you've got that one Take those out. No. So how would you... I think, actually, no. Is, isn't, there another, isn't there another way? Can we do it like this? If I go garage here, I've got that one there. If I go to you... No. The, the cell. I, I cannot reset this one to the shop. Unless I... The only way that I can do this is I've actually got to go into the shed and I've got to move the stuff out. When I come over here, I'll try. I'll, I'll try standing over here. This, this is, this is not good. Right, roll. I don't want that roll belt. I can see where the roll belt is, and that's the the Mega Twenty Two Hundred roll belt. Nova Cat. Look, no. Give me the one that I need. I got to figure this out. Okay, I have found a way to do it. You know the select the next machine option that you've got. You, you literally, you have to do that whilst on the map. That's how you do it. That's, that's how you make it work. So you've got to cycle through the machinery until you find the right one. Um, now I'm on Animal Dealer. So if I go there, Bale Spike, let me go the other way. Mega Bale Spike header. Right, so we've got it. So that is how you do it. You, you do actually have to, like, just tab through the machinery. Um, it took me a little while to figure that out, but I, I did eventually get there. Okay, so we want to reset that one back up to the shop like that. And there's nothing else that I want to reset at the moment. So let's come out of there. We're done. We've moved the combine, finally, all the way back to the dealership. And then I go over here to the combine. Uh, this one is still full of fuel. I thought that when you reset the combine, it emptied out all... Well, when you reset a vehicle, it emptied out. Maybe that's no longer a thing. Maybe it used to be a thing, but it's not actually a thing because it was a bug rather than an intended feature. I thought it was an intended feature. And I actually, i got to admit, I thought that was quite a cool intended feature because it made you think twice about resetting your machinery. But apparently it's looking like it's not actually an intended feature at all. It was just a bug. Um, which 
I'm a little bit disappointed about. I, I genuinely thought that was like a really cool new feature to the game. Well, never mind. What's done is done. Let's let's drop you down over there, and we've taken you back now, so you should be worth millions. Yes, I want to sell you. Okay, and then I want to go to there. I want to sell you as well for twenty six thousand. Okay, that one has been sold as well. I now got one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars. I'm short by a hundred thousand dollars. So, what are we going to do? Well, we do have the option to go and sell that baler. And if we go and have a look in our stuff right here. 34000 right there for that baler. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get you. And I'm going to back you up a little bit. Just like that. There. I'll switch you off a minute. By the way, I did find out what was causing that strange thing that I was experiencing on here. So I want to uh, customize you. You know it was doing that weird thing where it was like the camera was moving around? Yeah, like this. And I wasn't able to overwrite it. I have a Logitech Attack 3 joystick. And on the front of it, there's this little sort of dial type thing, which I've been told by Patreon Gracemark is actually more to do with flight simulators. It's a, um, basically it's like a, I don't know, it's like a throttle thing. It's a throttle dovetail, I think it's called it. Um, but yeah, it's that one. And unless I've got it, if I've got it centered, everything is fine and everything works exactly how it should. If I don't have it, because I didn't have it centered, when I was in playing FS17, uh, if I didn't have it centered, I would be walking continuously forwards all the time. It was really annoying. Um, eventually, I figured out what was doing it, and I knew to keep it, like, absolutely dead in the middle. But it wasn't doing anything in this one, and it had gotten nudged, it had gotten moved, and so that little dovetail dial thing on the front of the joystick, uh, the well, I suppose the back, technically, it's, it's the, the bit nearest to me when I'm looking at the joystick. Um, that had been moved, and it was forward, almost as far forward as it could go. Uh, but that seems to have been what was causing the whole thing in the shop. And uh, Petro Gracemark said to me that it might be something to do with the joystick, because there seems to be issues with the joystick with that. So I had a look, and that's what it was, is that little dovetail acceleration thingy-majiggy dial thing on the front or the back, whichever way you want to call it. Um, as I'm holding the joystick, it's the bit nearest me at the bottom. At, well, I suppose it's the back, really, isn't it? The front would be right at, you know, in front of the joystick. This is behind the joystick. So it's the back, not the front. Now I'm confusing myself. Uh, but anyway, that's the bit. So if you've got this, if you've had this little issue that I've been experiencing... And you've also got a joystick plugged in. Check to make sure that all the dials and um, little extra bits and whatnot on your joystick are actually all centered where they should be. Because it could very well be something to do with that. Right, how much did we get offered for this? Uh, not there. We want to go to here. We want to go to the garage. 34 for 90 from there. So I'm going to take it down here. And I'm going to drive it straight in onto the pad over here, like that. And I'm going to unhitch you there. I'm going to drive my tractor out of the way. Bounce and bump all over there, like that. And then we come whizzing over this side and we have a look. 41,383 instead of 34. So we get 7,000 extra for selling it here, which is pretty good. Yes, I want to sell it. Okay, that's that one sold. So we've now got $195,000. I wanted 250,000, well, it's actually, excuse me, uh, it's actually close to 255,000, I think. Uh, but we should have just enough. I'm hoping we can also take out some more loan. Um, I don't know what the maximum amount is for the loan, but I think it's, it is quite high. So if I can go up a little bit more, 254, 25, we go 264. Like that. So we have 265,000. That gives, you know what, let's, let's go for a, a solid round number, shall we? Or shall we? No, we won't. We'll do it like this. We'll, we'll see. We'll we'll see if we can cope with it like this. So we can go into the harvesters in there, and it's the Massey Ferguson Activa Seven Three Four Seven S. We've got standard wheels. We've got wide tires. Those are an extra two grand. Um, although I do prefer to have wide tires because it really does reduce compaction. It makes a big difference. So we're 
Oops, I didn't want to do that. Um, wide tires, buy. Yes, $204,000. Nice. Okay, back out of there. And then we go to this one and we go to the headers over here. So we're not getting a Helianthus 5700, which is a... Um, that does nine miles an hour, and these do six. Yeah, that one is really fast. A stripper header, so it goes much faster. Uh, sunflower header there. We don't want one of those. Nope, it's this one right here that we're after, a 7.6 meter Activa 7347 header. Um, this header here is a nine meter Draper Stream 900. Now, I would actually prefer to have that one, but I don't know if that one would be compatible. I don't think it would fit on the... Massey Ferguson. I think it would be too big for a start. It's a 9 meter header. So we're going to have to go with this one. And details. That one there. There's no options on it. It is just flat on the ground. Which means we're most... Yes. Okay. We're most likely going to have to buy a trailer for it. Because we're not going to be able to get down the road with this thing stuck on the front. Combine is too big. So there's our new combine. A shiny new Massey Ferguson Combine. I know, I know, I know there are those of you out there who would very much like me to get a John Deere Combine. I will get a John Deere Combine at some point. I'm not getting a John Deere Combine right now because I can't afford it. We don't have the money and I, I can't justify spending all that extra money just because we want green rather than red. And yeah, it, it's, it's not worth it at the moment. So there is our shiny new combine, but I'm not going to be able to drive... Actually, you know, I think I could drive this one up the road just as it is without any extras. Um, it's going to be a squeeze, but I do know this does happen, right? Not so much in the UK because our roads are so narrow, it's pretty much impossible to go driving up the road with a header attached. But I've seen plenty of videos of farming all around the world and every single farmer that I know, every farmer that I've ever seen, it doesn't matter where they are in the world, and we do this in the UK if we can, um, we'll drive the combine up the road with the header attached properly if they're able to. So someone would drive on ahead and stop the traffic and just sort of say, look, stop right, right here. There's a combine coming and stop them on this corner here so they couldn't come through. And then the combine will be able to make it through. So I'm hoping we can do this and then we don't need to mess around with a header trailer. Because we're not going to need a header trailer for this combine back home. All we got to do is get it up this road. We have traffic enabled on the map and there's no traffic down here at the moment. We've had someone drive on ahead and they've, they've stopped all traffic. So it's very, it's very convenient for us. It also means that we may be able to do a harvesting job in there. And actually... Oh, no. Was it there that there was a harvesting job available? You know, I don't know. I think it was on field 23 that there was a harvesting job available. I don't know if it's still available. It might actually still be available right now. We could go and do that. But anyway, we're able to fit up the road. I have seen this a bit in the UK... But it's, it's quite rare because our roads are so narrow and we tend to have hedges and fences and everything all along the roads. It is quite rare to see this. Um, so I do tend to see it more in videos for other countries rather than the UK. But still, it does happen. It definitely does happen. So I just want to pause there a second. Uh, we are right next to field 23. Field 22. 23 harvesting right here. Look, I can do that. I can borrow the items if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to accept the contract. I've got a combine that is available right here to do this. And this is going to earn us an extra $1,000. Combine is already paying for itself. Already paying for itself. $1,000 at a time. Yeah, it, it, let, let's be honest here. $1,000 is not really going to cover it just yet. I mean, it, it, it's a start, isn't it? It is a start. Uh, I want to go there like that and unfold the combine. Of course, yeah, it, it squats itself down now. And also the combine folds itself up. Which is amazingly beneficial because it didn't used to do this. Right? The combines had this issue where they weren't folding themselves up properly. And it's quite pleasing to find out that they are now actually folding themselves up. Uh, I'm going to switch this one over to disable straw swath. 
Now, some of them have an animation when you do that, and some of them don't. So let's just... Uh, no animation. Enable straw swath. So can I see underneath, maybe? Is there a thing under here? Right, there is no animation involved with the straw swath on this particular combine. Let's bring you in a little bit closer. I'm going to leave that entirely in the hands of the hired help. They're going to deal with that. Off he goes. And yeah, I, I just want to cut the straw. I'm not going to bother leaving it in a swath. Because what the swath does is it sticks out over the end of the field. And then the, the farmer, he, he doesn't actually do anything with it. And he just leaves it there forever. So we're going to leave that one going. This is our new combine. We now own this combine. This is ours. Our very own first new combine. And it's already paying for itself. We're going to make a fortune with this combine. An absolute fortune. We're going to make millions with this combine. While we're making our millions there, I'm going to go and get this one. And we're going to run back to the yard. And we're going to get the trailer that we're going to need for this job. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to do? Uh, you know, I don't remember. We're going to make millions with that combine. There was something else I was thinking that we... Oh, that's... I just wanted to say. You know, you remember the AI vehicle extension... I can't wait for the AI vehicle extension to make its appearance in this game. That is my single favouritest mod ever. I never really used it very much with the tractors. With, with the tractor work, never used it very much with that. But for harvesting, I used it all the time, especially with combines. Because of my habit of going around and making all the fields bigger and giving them rounded curves and everything like that, um, I've either got a manually nurse the vehicle all the way around the edge um which is fine you know you can manually nurse the the combine all the way around the field um and do that a couple times and then let the hired help take over uh, that's that's no great hardship but the great thing with the ai vehicle extension is that you can just put it to the edge of the field press go and away it goes the only issue you ever had with that was if you were going around a field that was curved, it would follow the curve around quite nicely if the cur if it was curving inwards. But if the field was curving outwards, it would cut that curve and it wouldn't read what was in there. So if there was a tree that it was going out round, so say the field itself um, was, was sort of coming along this way and then the edge of the field went around like that and then carried on like that over there okay you, you kind of get what i mean here do you so there's the edge of your field you're coming along this bit along here the edge of the field is here and then you bear around that way and then you bear around that way so what the combine would do is it would come right out to the edge of this bit because there's crop on the edge of this bit it would come all the way out it would turn if it had to this bit in here though it wouldn't follow the edge what it would do is it would try to straighten itself up a little bit and so it would cut right across here which was great and all but if there was a tree here and that was the reason for your curve on the field it would just drive into the tree and it wouldn't see it and that was the only issue i had with the ai vehicle extension it was it wouldn't recognize those trees it would just go into them so the first round around the outside of the field you still generally had to kind of nurse it a bit and make sure it was still doing everything that it should do for the most part it was okay though there weren't any serious problems with it so we're going to take this monstrous trailer here. This trailer is technically a little bit too big for this tractor, I suppose. Um, well, it, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, I, I'd say that it's borderline. It's pushing it a little bit. This tractor is a powerful tractor, but um, yeah, it is still a mid-range tractor. This, it's not like a massive, great, big beastie, is it? I reckon, though, that that combine is going to take everything all in one go. So all we need to do is just pause there. And we can switch. Yeah, it's going to easily pick up everything in one go. So we can just admire this combine for a minute. I'm going to actually stop a minute because I've been recording for days. So my voice is getting a bit croaky. Right, that's a little bit better. I've had some more coffee. Wetted my whistle a bit. Uh, yeah, normally I get most of my recording done in three days and then I spend the rest of the week working on time lapse and editing and other such things. So I, I, it's not quite so intensive. My voice does start to go a little bit, but it generally I'm all right. 
This week, however, I'm really pushing it because I need to get next week's recordings done as well. Um, for me, right now, it is first thing on Thursday morning. For you, it's Christmas Eve. So I've still got several more to do yet. I'll be working all day today and some of the day tomorrow. Tomorrow for me is live stream day as well. So I've also got the live stream that I need to do. Uh, another live stream on Saturday evening. So I'm thinking that by uh, end of play on Saturday evening, I could be sounding quite um, croaky. I'd probably be all right. It, it, it's going to be fine. It's... it's my voice doesn't hurt. I, I, I'm sort of quite used to this. I used to work in a loud factory, and one of the things about working in the loud factory environment was that you had to project your voice. And I need 12 hour shifts. Now, if I was training someone and I had to be talking to them all day, by the end of the day, my throat could actually be painful. Uh, because you have to, I would have to, like, really be projecting my voice the whole day and, um, you know, telling them all the different bits and pieces and then you're trying to understand different things that are going on and you, essentially you, you know it, it would really push the limits of what your voice was capable of doing and it's quite interesting doing that you get home at the end of the day and you, you your voice is like quite sore but then you've got to go back in you've got to do the same again the next day and it really pushed it and I'm sure that my voice has actually sort of become deeper because of doing that and basically just shredding my voice box over the years on and off. Um, probably not the best thing to do, but still, it, it needed to be done at the time. So, we, yeah, that's, that's, that's all we need to say about that. I don't work there anymore, I'm very delighted to say, and I'm hoping I will never have to do... Well, I can tell you with certainty that they will never let me back. Um, that there's no way that they would ever let me go back there. Uh, but I, I don't want to work in a similar environment. Uh, I definitely... And not because, you know, they're not going to not let me back because I was like a bad employee. It's just that um, I didn't exactly finish out well. It, it, it kind of... It, it ended on a slightly sour note because of disagreements between what I wanted to do and what I needed to do especially concerning this channel and you know what they wanted me to do because you well they're employers aren't they and you've also got to remember that an employer is never is well not any employer i generally found that a, a small scale employer is quite happy to help you out with a lot of stuff um including sort of you know setting up so that you you're you're on your way to leave them um, but if you go to work for a big company and you say, look, I need a bit of help for a transition phase for the next six months because then I'd like to stop working for you, they generally get quite snotty and do everything they can to make it as difficult as possible because they don't think you should be leaving uh, because it's inconvenient to them. And that, I've found, is often the difference between big and small employers. Now, it's not always the case. Some big employers are good. Some small employers are not good. But... It is more the case I found than the other way around. It's um, yeah, it's just just one of those things. Um, it, that's just the way the world is, and it's nothing's ever going to change it, is it? Right. We have no, uh, six thousand eight hundred, so almost seven thousand liters of grain in here. We probably could have carried that in our small trailer if we'd converted and put the sides on, and we didn't need to be hauling this massive, great monstrosity around. Still, we've got the monstrosity on board. So, where are we going to take this central grain elevator? That one is up there at the top. So, we want to go... Actually, we can just go out up this road. We'll go up there. Straight across the road here by the animal dealership. And we'll go up to there. And then... Ooh. I'm tempted to go around this road here. I mean, I'm also tempted to go up there. Because we got we can go up past the lime station. So, we'll see what... Let's go up that way first, and then maybe we'll come back that way. I don't, I don't know. Either way could be good. So, I'm just going to stop you right there. And I'm going to leave you there a minute. I'm not going to do anything else with you for a second. And I'm going to go to this one. We're going to do our little delivery job. Shouldn't really load it like that. That's not the That's not the best way to load it, because now all the weight is on the back of the trailer, and that's lifting slightly on the hitch. Now, it would be fine if I was going to add some more weight, but really I should have put the majority of that 
uh, over the front axle of the triple um, and also sitting on the actual tractor itself just to give us a bit more grip. Where it is at the moment is the least optimal way, especially if you're going up hills and that. That is going to be sitting backwards on the tractor. It's going to be, if anything, raising weight slightly off of the hitches on the off the hitch on the trailer. Um, probably not. It's, it's probably not enough to make a significant difference, but it can do. And um, so you do have to sort of be a bit careful with that. When loading a grain trailer, when when you're actually working in, uh, ooh, well, yeah, I do want to go this way. Um, when you're actually working in farming, if you're doing the grain cart job, uh, one thing that you do want to do is when you first start unloading the combine is you want to get the auger unloading just behind where the tractor is, you know, right at the front of the trailer. And you want to put a, dump in a, a good couple of ton of grain in there just to give yourself some weight on the tractor. That's what, that's the first thing, first thing you want to do is to give yourself some weight on the back wheels of the tractor so that you maintain your grip at all times. After you've done that, then you switch it over and you, you start filling at the back. And what I would do, because the vehicle that I used to use, you could see into it. Some trailers these days you can't. You've got to rely entirely on the combine driver to tell you where to go to fill it. But um, I always relied on a little window that I had. Um, in the trailers, we had like a little viewing port right there. So you could actually see at the back. I mean, you had to be careful where you were looking, but it was generally all right. Um, so I would load it into like a just see the bottom of the grain at the front of the trailer. And then I would pull forward as far as I could, as far as you know, it, it is a bit difficult to calculate. It's a, di a little bit difficult to sort of see the, the distances on it and get it just right. But generally it was okay. Um, and I would pull back and uh, we'll sort of pull forward then and then fill the back of the trailer and I'd fill the back of the trailer right up as high as it would go and then I would just slowly work my way forward again so that the auger of the tray the auger of the combine I started off at the front of the trailer and then it would go right to the back of the trailer and then as the trailer filled up as much grain as it could possibly get into the back I would get the combine driver just to help me just to fill the very tail end of the trailer I would then slowly move it forward because you can see quite clearly then all the way up to the front and you could load your trailer to the absolute maximum. Really load it to the gunnels and get as much in there as possible. Uh, this particular tip point, that's going to go right up into the roof, isn't it? If we let it. You have, you have to tip bit by bit in here. You have to be careful with tipping in these sorts of places. There, so we get $438 from selling grain on that particular little job as well as the um payment that we're going to collect in just a moment so we've come up alongside field eight which is quite a big field up there we're going to bypass field eight now we're going to go around this way because i want to see the other route along this way um we just want to turn off on that small road there and go around the edge of the field we go any faster 32 miles an hour is the fastest we can go so we want to go to here We've got cars in our way. Now we've got to wait. See, if we'd gone down past field 8, we'd, we'd be halfway home by now. Up through here. And, oh, hang on a minute. Isn't this near the... Yeah, the cave is up here. There's the hidden cave inside that windmill. There's no other hidden caves than anybody else has found at the moment. Um, but I still think that the hidden cave that is under that windmill is one of the coolest things that I've seen on any FS... Any, well, any FS map. FS 17, FS 19... If it's 15, that is definitely one of the coolest little things that I have seen yet. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that field there. That's a little bit strange, what's going on with that field there. Yeah. Right, now where am I going? Need to have a look. No, oh, right, so we want to go on down here, and then we, it's literally straight across the crossroads up ahead, and we're back down to where we were. So once we get back to the... Well, actually, we won't. We'll get back to the combine in a minute, and then we'll have a look, and we'll see if there's another combining job so that we can earn another little bit of cash, pay a bit more for our combine. Um, or do we want to? I'm thinking we will. I'm thinking we'll do one more job, and then we're going to start working on our own stuff. The reason I want to do one more is because at the moment we've got no baler. We sold our baler. We got rid of it. And I don't regret getting rid of it at all. That was a, a wise choice because I was getting fed up with a round baler. I don't want a round baler. I want a square baler. 
We need to get a square baler. We've got to go and buy one, but we can't afford to buy one. And I'm not taking out a bigger loan in order to buy a square baler. So we're going to be leasing a square baler in order to be able to do the next bit. And that is not going to be cheap, I don't think. So we're, we're going to want that. Plus, we're going to want a bale collector. I have no particular interest in doing it all with the front loader and a trailer and stacking the bales and stuff. Takes too long. Uh, maybe that would be some live stream material at some point in the future. But again, I'm not in any particular great hurry. I'm not a fan of doing that too much. I'll do it a little bit. I generally... I have my quota of handling bales in the time-lapse stuff, and then I'm, I don't want to be doing any more bales than that. So that's, that's generally when I do my bale stuff. Okay, so we get a thousand and one right here. Collect that as well. So we've now we picked up just under fifteen hundred dollars for that little job. Our combine there that cost us a quarter of a million dollars. We've now paid fifteen hundred of it off. We're making progress. What else have we got? We've got more transport quests. No transport quests there. 4,000 for that one. It's not bad. Four grand. We've got some weeding over there with an actual weeder. Field 20. Where's field 21? Um, no, that one's over there. And we've got field 22. We can harvest field 22. Take that one right there. 1,700. We'll do that. We'll accept that contract there. Field 22 because... Hang on, let me just turn that one off. Field 22 is just back up the road. It's the one right next to the one we're in right now. And we are likely to buy this plot of land that we're on right now. That is likely to be our next purchase. And if it's not, uh, then it would be the one opposite side of the road here. Because I'd like to keep our farm all close in together. I don't want to be sort of spreading it all out. It's either going to be here or it's going to be up the top of the cliff. But I'm thinking I don't really want to do to buy stuff up the top of the cliff. Um, just because, yeah, I don't want to. I can't, there's no particular reason. I mean, yeah, it would be good. It would actually be quite cool up there. Because, you know, you've got all of these fields in here joined together. If you go to land like that, look, see, we've got all of those. 126, 137, 213 over there. That's a great big field, though. Once you finish, that is a big old field. And you've got this up here, 370,000 for all that bit. Uh, this piece up round back here. There's no real reason to go by and all that, though. I don't know what we'd do with it. You know, it's, it's... And then you've got that piece there, which we could kind of level a bit of that out. This one here is 200,000. That one there is 150,000. I guess we could cut down the rest of the trees on that section. And then try and level it all out with a terrain leveling thing. Um, there's a couple of buildings on it, but not very many. So, I mean, we, we could turn that into fields. It would require a lot of work for landscaping and stuff like that in order to be able to take that one out. So, I'm not really sure that I'd want to do that. This field here, we'll be able to get all of this field onto the, um, loaded into that trailer. It's probably going to be more than one load in the combine. That's absolutely fine. I've got no issues with that. I just want to do one pass along the bottom end of the field here. And then we'll start working the length of the field from this side over. Um, but I want to um, I want to do this so that we, we, we get everything all into the same trailer. And it's also beans, which means that the yield isn't going to be very high anyway. So we, we don't need to worry about it at all. I'll bring that one back around like that. And... Sort of up like that. There we go. That seems close enough. And then press H. And that one's away. Okay. So that one is just going to carry on. It's going to do its thing. We don't need to worry about it. We could actually just leave this one going. I'm curious. Now that I'm doing this. If I start fast forwarding time. Will it kill the crop off before we finish this mission? That's something that I've got no idea about. Like, if I was to go in there, and I go to the mission right here, I'm on 11%. I can cancel that. You need to deliver the soybeans to the pork grain elevator. Um, I could cancel the job, give up on it altogether. But what I'm curious about is if I was to now start fast-forwarding time until the morning so that our crop over here becomes ready for harvesting... 
what is going to happen to that there it's got a couple of stages before it's actually it goes through into the morning and i do have i've got plant withering switched off do we does it sort of class as being our field like it used to in the other game in ever 17 or is it going to work out a little bit differently this is actually really good i do these things so you don't have to that's the motto here that we use. You know, I, I do try to do things realistically sometimes, but I also do things so you don't have to, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to fast forward time now. I'm going to leave it on 120 speed, and we're going to keep fast forwarding time. I'm going to get this tractor. I'm going to take this one up over there, but we're going to leave it on 120 speed, so it will take us through the night. I'm not going to, like actually skip the night by going back to the house and doing it although no if we're gonna do if we're gonna test this properly maybe we should i'll wait until about eight o'clock where you yeah you've got to wait until eight o'clock before you can do it anyway um so let's come on up here and because it'll be the morning that it will really change it over won't it so we'll bring you we'll bring this one up here and we'll stop you right about there that's fine you, you can stop there Okay, we'll watch this for a minute from here, and I, no, we'll, we'll go to about 9 o'clock, because th that's going to just sort of take a bit of time, and th there is a chance that something may have changed before 9 o'clock, and also it will start to go to night time, so we'll be able to see him working at night, and then we'll go back to the house, and we will fast forward time until the morning, um, and we'll... we'll do a good fast forward. I'm not going to like stop it at 6 a.m. or something like that. We'll do a good fast forward and we'll really see what this one is capable of doing. So it, night is now starting to fall. It's starting to get a bit um, darker. Well, dusk is coming in. Um, so it's getting a little bit darker now. We're going to... He should actually switch his lights on any second now. The hired help does switch their lights on eventually. There he is. He's got his lights on. If I'm down here... Oh, I can... Can I see his lights? Yes, I can. So it was just a tiny little bit too far back for me to be able to see the lights properly. But I can now see the lights. Right. So we know that he's, you know, lights come on. That's all working fine. Uh, we're nearly halfway on this field. I want to try and get open. Okay, let's go to the house now. We'll go over to here. And we will we'll run over to the house and we will fast forward the night. Um, I'm going to leave it on the 120 time speed as well. Right, and then I want to press R like that. Yes, I do. So I'm going to go 12 hours. It's going to take us through until 9 o'clock in the morning. Right, it's a really long time. So our field should be ripe and ready. No more space for new pallets. I should have moved the pallets for the wool. Uh, that was my bad. I should have done that. Um, yeah, we're, 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 we're crammed full. Look at that. We're crammed full of wool. Uh, chickens, they're doing all right. So we're still on 120 times speed. I've got the OSR over there, or canola, whatever you want to call it. That's getting ready for being ripe. And then back over to this field over here, it's still working. We're 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, let me just slow that down a minute and let the, the game kind of catch up with us a little bit. That hasn't changed. Everything else has changed. Everything else has jumped on. We've got this one is now middle stage ready for ripe. Uh, ready for harvesting. That one's nearly ready for harvesting. This field hasn't changed at all. No alteration there at all whatsoever. Um, all we've got now is there's no space for the new pallets over at the sheep. Um, and I'd like there to be some space for the pallets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the Mahindra here and I'm going to see if it's possible to shove some of those pallets out of the way so that we can um get more pallets coming in i don't know if this is a thing that we can do but i'm going to test this as well can i push them out of the way is that going to be too close i've got there there's two of them there and then i'll go in again and all i'm going to do is i'm going to shove both of these out of the way i'm going to i'm going to shove them over there like that and I'll stop. And then I'm going to move this one away. Because I don't want this one to sort of confuse the issue. Just in case it does. We'll stop that one there a minute. 
And then we'll go back over here and we're going to just jump and fast forward now. There. It has now brought up some more wool. Okay, and how much wool have we got? Does it store up what we didn't know it doesn't? It used to store up what we didn't have room for. We've got all the chickens here. The chickens are now maxed out. So we're going to sell a load of these chickens. And what I've actually... I'm pretty sure that the best way to do this with chickens is actually not to have a mixture. What you actually want to have is all the same chickens and you don't want any of the others. So we've got, at the moment, a mixture of black and browns. I'm going to sell the browns. So what I want to do is all of the brown chickens now, I'm going to move these over like this. And then we'll sell all the brown chickens that we've got and we'll only keep black chickens. So I quickly go through like that. There we go. Browns are now all moved. Uh, fee 630. We do get 420 profit from selling these chickens. 420 profit for selling chickens is not too bad, really. Uh, there's another brown there. And you can see here, then they've, they've sort of done one of each. So we'll just now go down through and we want to remove any brown chickens at all. We're just keeping the black ones. Just blacks, no browns. There. Okay. Space confirm. That gets us $500. For those chickens and now if we have a look at our chickens we've got one rooster and we've got 49 black chickens in there cleanliness is down to seven percent we've got plenty of food in there for them and we've got the eggs it's going to take a little while for them to sort of figure out that they are now able to reproduce again it's also going to take a while to build the numbers back up but that'll be fine we've run out of time for today's episode so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get to the end of the row and then i'm going to stop and then we're going to save and exit the game and when we come back we'll see if skipping through the night and all the rest of it has made any difference to the overall performance of the mission and anything else so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.